Let's see if they'll hit this popper. I bet you they will. I bet you they might touch it. Oh! Double duck. Alright guys, thanks for clicking on this one. I do appreciate it. My voice is still not 100%, but I didn't want to wait anymore, so here we go. Alright guys, this is going to show you or answer a pretty popular question I get is, how do you know how to fish and where to fish exactly? So here we go. This is winter time, late fall. This is great for freshwater and salt water, and uh, I'm going to get into it here. So. You want to have at least two rigs ready, two rods ready. You want one rod for jigging, something you could jig a 8-inch flutter spoon, uh, some smaller spoons too, but mainly the 8-inch flutter spoon. And you want another rod for throwing plugs, poppers, or plastics. Uh, I keep like five rods ready, but I know not everyone's going to be able to do that. So at least have two. So you have one for throwing baits and one for jigging baits. Now when we get started, we are going to usually look between the river channel or a shipping channel and the bank. Okay. So right now we have the uh, a very awesome way to find fish, and that's the birds. This time of year, lots of birds are feeding because the fish are pushing all these small baits up. And we're going to use what we see, and we're going to look for those birds. So this is a very simple way to get started, but I'm going to show you exactly how we attack this. Heading out, looking for birds right away. Someone's looking for birds. Actually, everyone's looking. And I'm going to position a boat between the river channel or a shipping channel and the bank. Now, I'm going to skirt the edge, and I'm going to look at my fish finder. And everyone's looking for diving birds. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how we attack it. We're going to start right here. We have the luxury of birds. And we go right after those birds to get started. But pay attention. I'll show you how we transition from casting to jigging and why and how we do both. So uh, please uh, subscribe if you guys haven't. It really helps. Uh, and, of course, a thumbs up and share these videos like on Facebook and stuff because YouTube is making it really hard on long videos. And uh, I really want to keep doing them. I don't want to have to do just short. So I appreciate your support, guys. Let's get on to it. Here we go. So you can see the bank is behind us. I'm right position where I want to be, right between the bank and the river channel. Now, we saw birds right away, even though I'm still looking on my fish finder in this area. We well, see the birds. See like and we can see the bass beautiful. getting blown clear out of the water, so beautiful. we know a popper is going to work. That is beautiful. Pay, atten pay attention to how many times Tommy casts. Let's see if they'll hit this popper. I bet you they will. I bet you they might touch it. I'm throwing a ghost popper. Tours right there is throwing a old tsunami white popper. Yes, sir. Tommy's throwing a chartreuse popper. Uh, they might. I think he already hit it. Oh. I have that clear ghost popper that I really like. Look at that. You can see the fish come out of the water if you look close. Popper's a safe bet when you see the stripers actually flying in the air. <laughs> All right. Torres is hooked up. I am hooked up. Tommy is on his second or third cast. Now, why aren't they hitting Tommy's? I mean... That's a bunch of piranha right there, right? Well, it's because of water clarity. We've had extremely clear water right here, and water clarity really tells you the size and the pattern of bait you want to use. Natural colors work better. Smaller uh, profiles work better. That clear water. You don't want something super crazy bright. They can see the bait so crystal clear in that water, get a good look at it, that, that I believe those super bright colors just don't look natural enough for them. They're great in stained water. So Tommy is still not hooked up. You hear him even say, I think my plug is too big.
Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, striped bass, large popping plug. Those are two great adjustments to make, right? If they're not hitting and other people are catching fish. Size and, and a color pattern. But he went down to a clear popper later on and caught just as many as anybody else. All right, so as we're getting these fish in, you can see the fleet out there, and I really didn't want to stay near them. So we kind of transition away from this, and I'll show you how we do it. That's the 130 size uh, ghost popper. It's a slightly smaller than the one I've been throwing, which is the 150. All right. All right, when you handle these, a lot of people have different ways to do it. I always grab the popper. I always grab the business end. Yeah. <laughs> he can shake all he wants as long as I got a firm grip on that popper. Pretty fish, good fish to start with. That 135 popper. Go away. Go grow, big girl. All right, so you might ask, why are we chasing birds today, but some days we don't? In fall, the stage is set for this. Uh, during the summer, lots of bait are harboring up in here. Big bait, small bait. There are bunker, adult bunker, peanut bunker, uh, spearing, sand eels, killies, uh, shrimp. I mean, everything is in here during the summer. And when the stripers come down, it gets very, uh, gets cold way up north first. Gloucester, even north of Gloucester. Those bass come down, they come into the bay. There's tons and tons of little bait. Little bait gets pushed to the surface easy and birds eat the ton out of it. So birds love that little tiny bait. We, we ran over a, a, pot, a flock of seagulls in the dark one time, didn't see it. And a bird rolled in, into the boat, coughed up tons and tons of peanut bunker. And that's what these birds are doing. So in the spring, you don't see it like this because first there's not any birds around. It's very cold early spring and there's not much small bait around. All the bait that's here is adult. And they don't really push to the top as, as well as a little tiny bait. And there's not as much of it. So we still get breaking fish in spring, but not like in fall. We really, we usually don't so, see boats. So, you can oh, wow, see me look at them under looking. Us. Jeez. Right. Yep, Massive school heading under. towards those breaking fish, but no, I just came off them now. this uh, is right by that yeah. river channel. Shipping channel. Right there. They're See it? Ready to come up right on the there. edge. See that? That's why you gotta have a jigging rod ready. You know what? Uh, you got a spoon. You might want to put it down. Uh, hold on. Let me see. We got 40 feet in the channel. You got it already? You typically see bigger fish this time of year on those spoons on these schools. Yeah, they're down there. They're on the bottom. They're on the bottom. Port side. Oh yeah, they're thick. So that's it. Plug rods go up. Really thick. Cheeking rods come down. Tours is throwing a chartreuse. There's no way they're not going to hit that spoon. Ben Parker spoon, eight inch. Tommy is throwing a gold. Drop it down and crank it through. Look at that. And chrome, eight inch. Ben Parker. Yeah, he's so So you saw what we just spoke about how chartreuse wasn't getting it done on the popper because of the water clarity happens again right here and this video is shot in order so this was just after what what just happened with those popper fish follow drifting right with the boat you think anything would bite right send anything down there and they're gonna crush it bunch of piranha that shark true spoon and even all the way down deep where there's not a lot of light it was still this is too bright for them. This kind of day we can go through the whole box. Look at Tommy behind me. Tommy's hooked up. Gold spoon. Quietly hooked up. Peacefully. He's a peaceful fisherman. Copper works great too. In this water clarity. Yeah, when you see it, we were, ch we were chasing these birds, but when you see them thick like that, you gotta stop and put a spoon down. You're gonna get your bigger fish that way. Tours can't buy a bite right here because of that color. And there's a fish hooked up. You guys know who do this a lot. As soon as somebody hooks up, usually everyone can hook up. 
All that craziness down there triggers him, but he still would not touch that chartreuse spoon. And Torres is bad. He's a bad man with that spoon. He's very good with it. I know some of you guys look at that water clarity and say, that's mud. Not for us. For us, that's crystal clear. All right, a fish went right down to the bottom. See that fish go straight down, a fish we just released. There's a whole stack of them down there, guys. A pile of them. We got a tornado in front of us. About 200 yards in front of us. You want to go? For it? Yeah, want to go for it? Oh, wait. I don't know. Put them back. Put those spoons back down. Look at that. Jeez. How are you not? How are you not hooking up? See that? I saw your yeah, that school's too thick. We ain't going nowhere. Oh, dude, they're just. From 40 to 10. Nobody around us either. They're all kind of chasing 80. those birds. Just as thick as you'll ever see, man. I'm about to cast a rod here, Tommy and Tommy hooks it. Hitting that gold and chrome screen. That's what you live for. That's what you live for. Look at that. Look at that. I never get tired of looking at that. 59 degree water. All those fish, and they still won't hit that chartreuse. <laughs> but at this point, he even said it. He says, I got to change that color, but he really wanted to just there, stick guys. with it for a little while, see what was going to happen. No birds on it, but they're busting. You can kind of hear him say it a few started. times in the video. So it's just a slight difference in color, and he's right. Another good tr trick, guys, when you're headed out looking for birds, if you uh, start on that bank near the channel, like I said, look at the trees. You'll see birds hanging in those trees. Chances are they're very close to where the fish have been feeding. Birds don't go very far. Put a copper one up, sure. So that's basically it, guys. Make sure you have a rod for casting and a rod for jigging. Minimum. When it comes to casting, I like to have something that I can throw a plug with and something that I can throw soft plastics with. So really three rods. Something with plastic, something with a popper or a plug, like a deep diving plug or a jerk bait, something you can cast far like a wind cheater. And uh, have something for your plastics with your BKDs, if you like hoagies or uh, bass assassin flukes, those are good too. And of course your jigging rod here. So I'm going to post a video breaking down all three combos. Lots of fish. It's a much better quality fish. Where Tommy was just struggling a minute ago. Went from zero to hero, right? Everywhere we're not moving. That's why we're not moving. It's great that we can mark fish like that because we can stay away from the massive, uh, the biomass of boats. Please don't make me do mukbang videos, guys. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for your support. Put down in the comments what baits you like to throw, especially when you see conditions like these. What would you use if you were heading out chasing birds and you're also marking fish below the boat? Tell me how you would attack this. I'd love to hear from you guys. Please share it around and post in the comments because I learn a lot of cool stuff and other people learn by a lot of your comments. You guys have some great, great comments. And let's keep it going. Thanks, guys. I love you. Mean it. Maybe not. Someone calling me?
Awesome. Good Thank job, brother. Good job. Thanks. I appreciate that. Should we throw them a spoon? Yeah, if you want. There's a couple yellow ones. Have one of those yellow spoons. Yep, right there. Throw them an old school yellow. Yeah, see you on top of each other, right? I appreciate it, bro. Have a Thank good you. night. Thank you.